only 4.0% of players earn Mass Effect's Platinum Trophy. Why? Well, we're gonna dive into that, but first, the main reason we're making this video is because I remember back in the day, I went to GameStop with my mom for Mass Effect 3's pre-order night, yes, I was a little baby like that, that's real depiction of me, and I got the pre-order bonus, and I was so excited, I skipped school and everything, it was so exciting. This is my favorite game series of all time, and I'm absolutely in love with it. So there's a lot of trophies for this game, but we're gonna do a little twist, we're gonna actually have a story with it, with our main character. So buckle up, enjoy, get some snacks, and there's gonna be timestamps everywhere, and enjoy Mass Effect. In the year 2148, humanity discovered a technology that was a force that controlled the various fabric of space and time. They called it the greatest discovery in human history, the civilization that this galaxy called it. Before we do anything, we need to talk about the background of our character. We're Earthborn. We were raised as an orphan on the streets. You escaped the life of petty crime and the underworld gangs by enlisting with the Alliance military when we turned 18. During our military service, we went on a mission that went terribly wrong, losing all of our squad members. We had to overcome physical torments and psychological stresses that would have broken most people. We survived while everyone else fell around us. And this is what Commander Shepard looks like. Ew! Don't worry, he gets handsome later on in the series. Face code is going to be in the description. We are going to be playing this game on insanity difficulty mode because we ain't no bitch, or maybe we are. The game starts off with two people that we don't know yet, talking about Commander Shepard and how he is the only one that's going to be able to save humanity in the coming days. Currently, Commander Shepard is aboard the SSV Normandy. The SSV Normandy is an alliance cruiser that was made by the Terrians, which are these guys, and the humans. Currently on board the Normandy is a Spectre named Nihilus. We'll explain what Spectres are later. Commander Shepard familiarizes himself with the crew and everybody aboard it, like Navigator Presley, who, as the name implies, helps navigate the Normandy to each destination it goes to. Due to all the trauma Commander Shepard faced, he is kind of an asshole. That is what he's used to doing, especially when it comes to new people. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Marines are meant to fight. You just fix us up when we're done. On our way to meet Captain Anderson, we get ambushed by Spectre Nihilus. Nihilus talks about how pretty much we want Shepard to become a human Spectre. Our mission is to go to Eden Prime, where Eden Prime pretty much goes to shit. Get down! On the Zoom meeting, we see this really weird ship. Commander Shepard never saw one of these ships before, but in the future, he will see plenty of these. Alright, our mission is to head to Eden Prime, recover this Prothean Beacon, and also on top of this, help as many people as we can, and figure out what the hell is going on. Nihilus decides he wants to go off on his own, because apparently he works better that way, and we pretty much head down to Eden Prime, and we see these weird alien creatures, and, well, let's just say I got a little too trigger happy, uh, yeah. As soon as we start this mission, something tragic immediately happens. Poor, poor Jenkins. But Commander Shepard would still be focused on the mission. Leave him. We need to finish the mission. Aye, aye, sir. After tearing our way through the Geth, we encounter the survivor from the Zoom meeting. Actually getting chased by Geth, we end up managing to save her life in the process, but before then, we end up seeing what the Geth are using the human colonists for. We recruit Ashley Williams, and then we see what the Geth are using those spikes for. It's a good place for an ambush. Keep your guard up. Oh god, they're still alive! What did the Geth do to them? After wiping out those things called Husk, we end up finding even more survivors. One of these survivors is tripping and is crazy. Genius and madness are two sides of the same coin. Is it madness to see the future? To see the destruction rushing towards us? To understand there is no escape? No hope? No. Say goodnight, Manuel. You cannot silence the truth. My voice must be heard. Oh my god! What did you do? That might have been a little extreme, Commander. After pushing into Collymore, Nihilus ends up finding Saren. Saren's also a Tyrion Inspector, and, well, Saren ends up doing this. Don't worry. I've got it under control. Commander Shepard then sees the ship that was also on the zoom in again, but this time it's in person, and holy fuck, it's big. 
Pause on that, we encounter more survivors, and it turns out these survivors are actually a part of a smuggling ring where they were smuggling a bunch of weapons and guns. Coming from a gang, Commander Shepard really doesn't like that, and he doesn't like being lied to. Besides, I'm not a snitch. Would you rather be a snitch or a corpse? Powell. His name's Powell. No honor among thieves. We end up finding the contact for the smuggling ring, and this is this guy, Powell. Yes. And, of course, we shake him down so that way we can get even more loot. And hopefully to scare and intimidate him to stop them from doing it once and for all. Saren ends up actually using the Prothean beacon that we're here to retrieve. And the Geth set up bombs to destroy the colony and the beacon on top of it. It is our job to prevent that from happening. Anyway, all we do is just go up to these bombs, press the X button on it, disarm it, and we do it like four to five times. After saving the colony, Ashley accidentally activates the Prothean beacon, dumbass, and we have to save her. Shepard then gets some vision, so here's a warning now. No, don't touch me! After getting our first trophy, which is pretty much just being Eden Prime, we end up seeing Saren who's geeking the hell out. Where the fuck is my sister? We end up awaking from our weird dreams and visions to talk to Captain Anderson to reflect on the mission. I don't like soldiers dying under my command. Captain Anderson explains to us we have to talk to the council because Eden Prime was such a mess and Saren, a specter, betrayed the council, who, who the specters work for the council. We have to head to the Citadel because of that to prove that he is a traitor. This is what the Citadel looks like. The Citadel is beautiful and this is going to be Commander Shepard's first time on it. Look at that monster. Well, sizes and everything. After arriving on the Citadel, we end up meeting Ambassador Udina and the Council. Ambassador Udina was the one talking about us in the beginning of the game, or Commander Shepard in the beginning of the game, and pretty much he requests aid from the Council, they tell us to piss off, and this is where we get a lot of achievements, such as the Soldier Achievement and the Sentinel Ally Achievement. These achievements just have five of your squad mates complete missions with them. Easiest way to get them is on the Citadel, because you can do a bunch of side quests. This achievement used to be harder, because it actually used to just be based off time, from what I remember. Anyway, we try to get this trophy, which this trophy is find all primary codex pretty much and what you have to do for that is just investigate everybody pretty much ask them 10 million questions about each race and everything like that you'll get this over time in the game there's no way really you can miss this unless you're just skipping through dialogue anyway we start the first side quest in this though which is meet shira which is a sorry pretty much a glorified sorry prostitute for lack of better terms and i'd like to try out your services Shira ends up inviting Commander Shepard to her room, but instead of getting it on, she wants help uh, with the ex-boyfriend who's been blackmailing her, and she wants us to stop him. After talking to Shira, we end up heading to the council to talk to them, but just a side note, this is the most buggiest I've ever had this game be. Saren's hiding something. Give me more time. Give me more time. <laughs> Anyway, we head to the council, the council, of course, the council being the council, and I actually agree with them for this for once, is they want proof that Saren did the things that we claimed them would be. Uh, because we're just saying, oh yeah, he did this, and he's working with the Geth, which one is crazy and everything like that. And we also pin the fact that he's racist to humans, which is like, oh my god, okay, we're just double stacking. After we meet my favorite Salarian. What? Oh, no, I wasn't. Never mind. Anyway, this Slayer gave us a side mission, which is to scan Keepers. Keepers are these weird green things, and nobody knows what they're about, and nobody seems to care, but this guy. So, we just go run around and scan 20 Keepers. On our way to each side mission that we're doing on the Citadel, we end up spamming our abilities because there is a crap load of trophies where you have to use an ability 25 times. Commander Shepard ends up interacting with a Hanar preacher who is preaching about his gods and wants people to know all about him, while a seasick officer is complaining and wants him to leave because he doesn't have a permit. We end up siding with the Hanar because fuck the law, we don't give a shit about the seasick officer. And Commander Shepard is really progressive, he wants all the religious freedom you can have, even in space. On our way to find proof that Saren is a traitor, we end up scanning as many keepers as we can, and we end up meeting Emily Wong, where Emily Wong wants to uncover corruption on the Citadel. Yes, Commander Shepard confused why so many people need his help, specifically his help on the Citadel. He ends up heading to another person who needs his help, which is some girl who needs 
her sister to get out of Cory's den because she could be in danger, and we find some signal, and we encounter a fan. You're Commander Shepard, the hero of Eden Prime. I am so honored to meet you. My name is Conrad, Conrad Werner. Do you have time for a quick autograph? Commander Shepard really doesn't have that many fans, so of course he agrees, and he bids himself a farewell. We also get jumped by assassins when we head to Cory's den, and this is where we go to help the girl's sister who is undercover in Cory's den trying to uncover dirt, and we're kind of blowing the operation. We're blowing it out of proportion, and her boss ends up telling us to come meet him at CSEC. Pusha, I never did nothing to you. Damn newcomers. Think they can run the place. We then meet the CSEC officer where he bitches us out and then tells us, hey, we need your help. If you want to get rid of this girl out of Cory's den undercover away from the danger, you're going to have to help me recover some uh, weapon mods. And we agree to do this, and this is where we get an achievement. Get these mods into evidence. This was after Thanks getting the Shepard. mods. Pretty much what happens during the interaction is you just go to this Krogan, you say two lines of dialogue, you can blow up the operation by killing these guys, or you can just give them the weapon mods. We end up giving the weapon mods to them, and we end up saving the girl from Cory's den. Commander Shepard then heads back to Cory's den to talk to this guy Harkin, who, remember that CSEC officer where Caden did the whole Illuminati thing? Well, that guy named was Garrus, and he has the information that we need in order to get more dirt on Saren, and to prove that he was behind Eden Prime. We end up meeting Shira's ex-lover, where we tell him to stop being such a weirdo. Like, I don't know why he's being so weird. Time. Never let the enemy see your weakness. You know that, General. It turns out he wasn't really blackmailing her, but more badmouthing her. Anyway, we convince him to stop, and he gives us another side quest. Well, here's the soldiers acting like soldiers. Commander Shepard needed to take in the view, because he needed a little, a little breather from all the questing he was doing. Big place. That your professional opinion, sir? If you expect to get me in a tinfoil miniskirt and thigh-high boots, I want dinner first. Bruh. We have a lot of side quests to go to, especially on the Citadel, but we end up going and finding Garrus Vicarian, who is helping Dr. Michelle, who's currently being shaken down by a group of thugs, which we'll explore later on. Anyway, we recruit Garrus to help find Fist. He also tells us about Rex, who was in Cora's den asking for Fist, and he had some beef with them. And we end up recruiting the Krogan Rex, and we get an achievement for the Sentinel ally. You should warn Fist. I will kill him. I think we're gonna get along just fine, Rex. Let's go. I hate to keep Fist waiting. After this, Commander Shepard encounters Volus talking to a CSEC officer, and apparently some Salarian wants him dead. Turns out the Salarian Shorvin, the one who wants us to do the Keeper information, wants him dead. So we have to go and doing? figure out what the hell's going on and why he wants him dead. Drop the act. I want to know what's going on, Shorvin. Turns out the Volus was lying. Shorvin, of course, Shorvin being the sweet guy he is, was not going to kill anybody, and the Volus is actually an ex-partner of his. We agree to bring them back together and do the Keeper research. We end up fighting through Kor's den where we encounter dock workers who get in our way. Instead of killing the dock workers, we intimidate them, and we deal with Fist once and for all. I just killed 50 bodyguards to get in here. What do you think I'll do to you? Uh, well, uh... Wait, wait, I don't know where the Quarian is, but I know where you can find her. See where that meeting is before I blow your lying head off. I'm a ghost. Too many people died here, Fist. You don't get to walk away. After you deal with Fist, there's uh, some storage disks for Emily Wong right there, just lying out in the open, and then we end up finding the Quarian, who we needs help because the Shadow Broker is going to be trying to kill her. The coin, in fact, did have the information we needed to prove that Saren was behind the attack on Eden Prime and is working with the Geth, and also we recruit the Corian, whose name is Tally. But before we head to the council with this information, we bring Rex and Garrus with us to do a little bit more side missions. Remember that Turian who wanted to do the side mission? Well, there's an Elcor who pretty much has been spreading bad information because he believes the consort is selling his information. We tell him that he's wrong for that, and then we pretty much move on. That's the side quest for that one. And then there's this guy who pretty much wants his dead wife's body back because on Eden Prime she died to the Geth, and the Geth, how they killed her in a certain way, actually can prove very fruitful for the Alliance for their research, so they want to keep her body. So we actually side with the Alliance on this one, and we have the best dialogue in the game happen. This is war. People die. If you want to keep that to a minimum, let them run those tests. You think I've not given enough? Don't speak to me of duty. My wife is dead. I just want her to come home. 
I miss her so much. Anyway, that's sad that he lost his wife and everything. But we go back to the consort, and you know what we do? We get us some. Let's go. Yeah, pretty much we have this whole little scene play out, which is probably one of the weirdest and most awkward scene in Mass Effect history. Then on, after that, we get a little trinket. And we will uncover the mysteries of this trinket later. Out of your efforts with the Elgor Ambassador, I would like you to have this small trinket. What is it? A small mystery. Just a side note, I find it hilarious that the squad mates are just staring there like idle posing while we they, we watch to get it on. Anyway, we uncovered the signal source. The signal source pretty much was an AI that's funneling money because it's programmed to do so. Its creator died, so it doesn't really have a purpose anymore besides doing that. And since we discovered it, it actually wants to get with the gap and also wants to blow up the Citadel because we discovered it. We also get the Tyrion ally achievement here. Commander Shepard then heads back to Emily Wong where he gives us the data disk so that way she can uncover corruption and expose it and we also shake her down because we are not that far from being corrupt ourselves and we want the money and we had to kill a lot of people to get to it. We then finally head back to the council where we expose Saren where then they actually finally promote Commander Shepard to the Spectre, one of the biggest honors that he could get and he does not give a fuck. He wants to just stop Saren at all costs no matter what. This is also where we get the achievement or trophy for Spectre introduction. It's pretty much just become a Spectre. Requisitions officer. Anderson, come with me. I'll need your Before we leave the Citadel to go on the hunt for Saren, we get a couple side quests, like one from an admiral who has a missing team, he has no idea what happened to it, so we had to go look for it. Then we have another one where this guy is pretty much lost his brother some place out in deep space, we have to go look for him. Yes, there's a lot of looking for people in this game. And then, Commander Shepard talks to Helena Blake, who tells us, hey, pretty much wipe out this crime syndicate, because she wants to take over the crime syndicate, because she's very upfront with us, which is nice of her, and so we agree to do that. Also, we get control of the Normandy, and this is where we get our first trophy for going on a new planet, an uncharted world. I believe there's three trophies for the uncharted world ones. One is land on an uncharted world, middle of exploration, and then there's a couple others. Then afterward, we go after a thresher maw, which we're going to have a thresher maw count for each thresher maw we kill, and it's going to play into it a little bit later with Commander Shepard background. He really hates thresher maws. In the Uncharted Worlds, or each Uncharted World, there's a bunch of collectible items you can get, like a sorry writings, protein data disk, and a bunch of minerals. We end up getting all of these. But anyway, the mission that we're on is Major Kyle. Major Kyle pretty much is an Alliance officer who served in a really big battle, and he has smashed a big group of uh, Biak followers. He already killed two Alliance members, and pretty much we have our job is to talk him down and to get him to go to jail. Or we can end up terminating all the Biotic followers. Commander Shepard may be an asshole, he may use intimidation, and he may use violence to get his way 9 times out of 10, but Commander Shepard is not a killer. He does not want to kill these people. Commander Shepard uses his gift of intimidation to actually talk down Major Kyle, and this is also where we get the Krogan Ally Trophy. Wait, if my children see you taking me away, they won't understand. They will attack, and you will be forced to kill them all. I'm going to trust you. If you betray that trust, you and all your children will suffer. I will not betray you, Commander. Thank you for this. Your pilot can have an alliance command patrol. Sometimes the past comes back to bite you in the ass. Well, when it comes to this situation with our coups, yes, it came back to bit him in the ass. Somebody's killing a bunch of scientists for no good reason, and he needs to find out why. He needs to settle his past with the coups and his missing squad mates and the amount of trauma he has with it. A lot of memories come back when landing on here. A lot of tragedy has happened here. A lot of people that Commander Shepard can no longer see anymore are here. Pretty much what happened to Shepard here is he was tortured due to a sick experiment that an organization called Cerberus was doing. Anyway, we had to figure out why these scientists are dying, especially the last guy who was working on that project that tortured Commander Shepard and wiped out his entire unit. After Commander Shepard pushed his way into the base, he discovered a surprise, an old squad member that he thought was dead, and clearly he wants revenge. And so does Shepard. They were running tests on the Thresher Maws. They let those things hit us just to watch and study. Corporal, if you kill him, you're a criminal. But I am a Spectre. Nobody will question me. Commander Shepard puts down the project member, finally being able to put rest to the nightmare that was a coos. We then head to the Armstrong Nebula. The Armstrong Nebula houses a side mission called Gef Incursion. The Gef Incursion, pretty much the Gef are a mountain and big assault, and pretty much we have to go to each system in this area and wipe out a bunch of Gef. We wake our way to the first outpost where we actually easily wipe it out. There are four outposts in total, and on the second outpost, we end up getting the trophy for Medal of Exploration. We then go to wipe out the second and third outpost, but on our way to the fourth one, we actually wanted to talk to some of our squad members because we haven't really been chatting them up, and they say some weird stuff now. All right. 
I, I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. Ashley, no one likes you. You are racist towards aliens. You speak of God as if I give a fuck. And worse all, you never shut the fuck up about your sister. Oh lord. Randy Shepard really popped off on Ashley. We do not like her. Anyway, we talked to Garrus, and Garrus is weird. Hey, Commander. Do you remember that time you used me as a comrag in front of the Geth? Then fucked my butt so good till the point I prolapsed. Garrus, what the fuck? Giving out that kind of intel is treason. After Garrus exposed Commander Shepard's deep secret to the world, we get another trophy, which is Metal Exploration 3, which is laying on, on eight Uncharted Worlds, I'm pretty sure? Yeah, it's eight Uncharted Worlds. After clearing out the fourth outpost, we head to the fifth outpost, where the fifth outpost, we get a special trophy for doing Sabotage Specialist, which is use the Sabotage Power 25 times in a row. All these are pretty much... 25 times in a row, besides the first aid specialist, which is 50. At the fifth outpost, we discovered a bunch of encrypted files that we can actually use about the evolution of the Geth since the banishment of the Corians. We actually give this to Tally. When we give it to Tally, for some reason, she has like some weird Easter egg dialogue. Not sure if this is because of the Legendary Edition. Hello, Commander. Sometimes when everyone on the Normandy is asleep, I reach down into my suit to scratch my balls. Then I get a quick sniff and um, do they smell good? This I did ask and relate to. Being that the explorers we are, we go to another uncharted world, but this time we have no idea what the side mission is here. So we end up just exploring it, killing a second Thresher Maw, making it the second one for the video, and this one is called Missing Survey Team. So the synopsis of it is that we go into this base and a bunch of husks are lying around. It turns out that the survey team finds this ancient artifact that the Geth kind of use, and yeah, they got turned into husk pretty much. The next planet we head to actually is marked, we know where we're going for this one, it's Hostile Takeover 1. So pretty much we have to go to a crime syndicate major base and we have to completely wipe it out. There are two in total, this is from Hostile Takeover, Helene Blake, Blake remember the one high ranking criminal that we talked to? Well, we easily wipe out the entire base. After we wipe out the entire base, we head to this random ship that's sitting in the middle of nowhere and it gives us the mission. Hostage. The synopsis to this is a bunch of fanatical biotics kidnapped the chairman of this big organization that was supposed to help them, which they didn't. They actually did a bunch of like cuts, so it actually hurts them. Anyway, we rush through this whole thing to get to our objective because we could just do that. See how it is? You write letters and everyone ignores you. You had your chance. Some L2s are nearly crippled from side effects of the implants, but you voted against reparations. If you die fighting, you'll get a lot of biotics killed as well. What do you mean? You've just made all L2 biotics look like terrorists. Think of what will happen to them. We end up actually saving the chairman, but since we actually ran through and didn't kill any of the biotic fanatics at all, the cutscene is completely bugged, and there's even a clones. There's just clones that chased after us the entire time. Anyway, we head to the other planet to go kill the other crime boss, which we do easily, without a doubt. After we head to the ship, which is abandoned, but for some reason the engine is still running, like somebody's taking care of it, and there's no crew members inside of it. Well, it turns out there's this woman named Juliana, who actually was trying to save her uh, significant other, who was brain damaged, but she couldn't cope with the loss, so she ended up killing the entire crew. The crew wanted to turn off the machine that her significant other was tied to, we actually end up doing that, to give him kind of a form of mercy kill, and then we head to Helena Blake. I owe you a debt of gratitude. To deal with you. I'm giving you one chance to live through this. Shut this gang down. Once again, Intimidation wins the day because Helena Blake ultimately agrees to shut down her organization completely. No more crime syndicate for her. Anyway, we go back to the ship, we talk to Rex, where we get a side mission for him that we have to do, and we also talk to Garrus, who gives us another side mission. After talking to the crew, Commander Shepard decides to head to the place where the Admiral lost his missing Marines. This gives Commander Shepard a lot of flashbacks to Akuz because a Thresher Maul wiped out all the marines that went to go investigate this strange beacon that kind of lured them into the Thresher Maul nest. We end up having to kill the Thresher Maul in order to deactivate the beacon and to see what exactly happened where, once again, like I said, they were lured in by a weird beacon very, very similar to Akuz. We have to later report this to the Admiral. In a system close to it, we end up exploring another Uncharted world. On this Uncharted world, we encounter a bunch of pirates and a bunch of slavers. Well, there was one slaver, and it was Asari, who is the sister of an ambassador, and this ambassador was Nisana Dantes, who was planning on blackmailing us, but we end up killing her sister and getting the evidence that we need, which is exactly what she wants, so we gotta go and talk to her later. 
One of the main story missions has us finding this doctor named Liara Dasoni. Liara Dasoni is the daughter of Matriarch Benazia, who's working for Saren. Anyway, there's this little lava segment in this part where I try to climb this mountain for a while. I end up dying because I suck, but you can actually just speed run this part instead of going this super long roadway. Because this mission can drag with this Mako segment. So just drive through it like a madman and you should be able to do it. We also get Throw Mastery and a couple trophies here. For instance, we got Throw Mastery, then we're going to get Electronic Specialist, which is use overload 25 times. Then there's warp or rap mastery. I, I don't even know what it I'm, I can't I can't read. I'm stupid. All right <laughs> Leave me alone. It's rap mastery. You end up getting that which is just use that 25 times as well After clearing out the gap and making our way through the art Sony she absolutely destroys our eardrums So if you're wearing headphones, here's your warning now Can you hear me out there? I'm trapped. I need help Quit shouting this place is crawling with Geth Liara, not being too bright, ends up getting trapped in the stasis pod from the Protheans because she was trying to run away from the Geth. So we end up using a mining laser to get to her. For some reason, this was just lying about. And the whole ruins is crumbling. And Rex says my favorite line in the game. Oh, we also get the Korean ally trophy. Joker, get the Normandy airborne and lock in on my signal. On the double, mister. Aye, aye, Commander. Secure and away. ETA, eight minutes. If I die in here, I'll kill him. We don't have time to deal with this idiot. Charge! We also get damping specialists as well, and then we even get another trophy for completing the mission after we escape what they are to Sony. Too close, Commander. Ten more seconds, we would have been swimming in molten sulfur. We then discuss what our findings with the crew, with Liara Dasone, especially being introduced to a new member of the crew. Then we talk to the council where we do the most savage thing we can do in this game. I don't need this. Communications cut, Commander. We head back to the Citadel where Admiral's waiting for us, not even gonna bother trying to pronounce his name, where he wants to inspect our ship and we let him do so. Commander, I'm not happy. Sounds like a fairly common situation. Anyway, we pass a couple uh, intimidation skill checks where we encounter a lot of people in the Citadel. One, we have Nasadne Dantius, what we have to go talk to, but more importantly, after talking with the Rear Admiral, we talk to this news reporter, which her thing is she likes to set people up. Pretty much she asks the most out of pocket, out of left field questions possible. Well, we end up failing that. Then we meet Comrade Werner again, where he wants to take a picture of us now that we became a Spectre. And well, he kind of likes it a little too much. This is like rapid fire Citadel side mission. Pretty much we go to Dr. Michelle's office where she needs help with somebody who's bribing her and Commander Shepard says it perfectly. Every time I come in here, I see someone threatening you. Who is that? We then deal with the people who are threatening her. There's little secret. Her secret stays buried. Or I bury you. Hey, hold on! I'm just the middleman here. This is way more than I bargained for. We head back to Dr. Michelle to tell her the good news, but speaking of good news, we ended up getting Barrier Mastery on our way here, which is used Barrier 25 times. We encounter two people arguing, and Commander Shepard, being the nosy bastard he is, ends up intruding. They're talking about doing gene therapy on the baby, and, well, Commander Shepard really doesn't have any patience You're for it. You're afraid you'll lose the baby, just like you lost your brother. We bitch this guy up so hard to the point where he immediately agrees and sides with whatever this woman wants to do, and she is all for it. We end up encountering the Sonia Dantius, where we tell her her sister died, and she doesn't really care. We also get the Asari ally achievement here. I shall transfer a little something into your account. After this, we encounter Emily Wong. Emily Wong wants more help, yes. Besides us shaking her down for more money, she wants us to play this bug to kind of get even more corruption on the Citadel. Uh, about traffic control and all this. I, I, I wasn't really paying attention. Anyway, you go to this place, you play the bug, and you shake her hand, and you get money. Boom, easy. After doing so, we encounter the Admiral once again, where we tell him what happened to his missing team. He thanks us, and he wants to go investigate later. Then, we encounter an ex-gang member from Shepard's Pass. He wants us to free another gang member, because why not, and he wants to blackmail Shepard for some reason? Well, Shepard doesn't like that, and we rat on him. Xenophobe? I should have known he'd have friends. Thank you for the information. Finch, knowing that we were narc on him, ends up confronting us, and we bitch about I can legally execute everyone in this bar. You think the council cares about my shady past? Besides what the council thinks, Commander Shepard doesn't really care, he just wants to get this mission done. Anyway, we head to another Uncharted world where we help Rex find his family armor. This is what the synopsis of this quest is. After talking to Rex, you learn that he's looking for his family's ceremonial armor. It was taken away by the Terrians after the Krogan Rebellion. Now a profiteer named Tone has it. Pretty much, he's going to have to atone for his sins and we're going to have to end his life in order to get it. 
Rex in this moment is super mad. He wants to get his armor back so bad. This is also where we get another trophy, which is first aid specialist. What first aid specialist is, like I said before, it's just used uh, first aid 50 times. Super easy. We ultimately find Rex's family armor just lying in a chest somewhere, and he seems pretty happy, I guess. Um, I can't really tell. Even the game says so. We then head back to the Normandy to talk to some of our crew members, where Leora has the weirdest bit of dialogue to say to us. Hello, Commander. Do you know that 15 minutes could save you 15 or more on car insurance? For some reason, Leora is just a walking ad. We got a call from Admiral Hackett letting us know that, hey, Luna, the you know, the, the moon, our moon on Earth, yeah, well, they had a bunch of training simulations, and they had a VI there, and that VI went rogue. So now we have to go and destroy a bunch of VI conduits, and we have to kill a bunch of training machinery. We end up destroying the rogue VI in the process. Then after that, we head back to the Normandy to talk to Conrad Werner, where he really wants to become a hum another human specter. And we actually use Charm for once to convince him otherwise. Commander Shepard was able to easily persuade him to not do it because it's a terrible idea. And this will be the last time we see Conrad Werner. Now we're headed to Novaria. Got a council specter aboard. Landing access granted. We will be confirming identification on arrival. Alright, why are we going to Novaria? Well, it's a main story mission, and because Matriarch Benezia is ultimately there, it's our one lead to figure out what the hell Saren is doing, and the people here want us to get rid of our guns. Well, we're not going to do that. We don't want to do that. Also, we're a Spectre. We have the authority not to do that, because we can pretty much do whatever we want. We then hear something over the intercom system, and this lady actually prevented a bloodbath, because we were not going through Novaria without having our equipment, especially if there's Geth to be had here. Liara asks if we trust her, and obviously we're really not worried about her, because we do trust her, and because Commander Shepard really has a soft spot for his crew. Anyway, we progress a little bit more, and it turns out we need that pass, we have to see this little Solarian man, and this guy is kind of a douchebag. One of the first Solarians I've ever met that is actually great, a douchebag. Anyway, this lady actually gives us a way to go and get a pass, but we have to help her out. But, we talk to this guy named Opold, and he actually wants us to smuggle some weapons into the area, so pretty much you just go into back to your ship, go to up to Opal, you can give it to him, or you can not. We choose not to, you can sell it to this Krogan, I actually don't even do that, I give it to, um, Analeus is his name, I give it to him, the Solarian, I actually give it to him, and he ends up giving us a pass, but I actually want to help Parnasini out, because there's corruption in Novaria, so we go ahead and go help her quest out still. We get encounter an Asari, who wants us to spy on this other tech company, because this is all, Novaria is all about business, and Commander Shepard's business is far more more important so we bat her out and then we actually go back and lie to her so that way this tech company can mess with them and send them false information and we end up lying to her to get credits 500 credits to your account I could easily call Mr. Vargas and tell him what I just did. We end up talking to Partisini's contact, where it's actually this guy named Lokir, a Turian, who has dirt on Analeas. And then what we have to do is we have to go to his room that Analeas is actually trying to give up all the evidence. We pass an intimidation skill check to kind of clear out a little bit more of the guards instead of having to actually completely wipe them out. And we get a little bit more renegade in the process of doing so. So we still have to clear out all the guards in this room just to get to this evidence. And boy, I hate this chick right here, and it's so satisfying to actually get rid of her. After obtaining the evidence, we head back down where we encounter Parnasini where she wants us to meet us at a bar. Turns out she's working with Eternal Affairs and she won't look here to testify in court. Allow me to reintroduce myself. Parasini, Novaria Internal Affairs. This is where you can give it some testify or just give them the evidence, but this is where you grind Paragon and Renegade. And I'll show you how to do it. You can get infinite amount of Paragon and Renegade here. It's a super massive glitch. Anyway, so pretty much all you have to do is investigate, hit another question, testify against Analeas, and then just rinse and repeat. I do this for both Paragon and Renegade. Until the point I get this trophy called Principle. Principle is you gotta get 75% of Paragon or Renegade points. Really easy stuff, especially if you do this. The main reason I maxed out the Paragon and Renegade is due to the fact that one is an easy glitch and we get two side missions. One for maxing out your Paragon and one for maxing out your Renegade. We go back to Parnasini where you tell her the good news where she ultimately makes her arrest on Analeas. And oh boy is it so satisfying. Fuck Analeas. You, Shepard! I demand you place this bitch under arrest! Just to put salt on a wound, we end up telling Opal that we gave uh, his package to Analeas, and this is where we end up heading to Peak 15 with the pass in hand. On our way to the Rift Station, we encounter some Geth where they try to ambush us. Pretty much you can just jump into Mako and kill them this way. When we arrive at the Rift Station, we encounter some weird creatures that we've never seen before. 
What was that? After dealing with the creatures, we have to repair this VI, where it gives us the worst puzzle in the game. Now, I still have no idea how they even solve this, so instead of doing this bullcrap way, after like 10 years of playing, I don't know how to solve it, we just slap some Omni Gel on this shit, just to figure it out, like, just to solve it. And that's when we are able to encounter the VI, and have to repair a bunch of stuff to repair the tram car to get to the ultimately our goal in the station where we would meet Matriarch Panesia. Oh, we also get Lift Mastery here too. Not only do we get Lift Mastery for using Lift 25 times, but we also get Singularity Mastery because we use that 25 times as well. After dealing with the creatures that were here, we end up meeting some survivors along the way, and these survivors, well, I mean, this guy's bald, so that's kind of scary in itself. He lets us know there's no way to pass, so we have to find a workaround away, or we could end up killing all the guards. So what we do is, we decide to help this doctor out, because all the people are sick due to this weird plague going on, because the creatures were able to cause that for some odd reason. Not only is Shepard a soldier, but now he's a doctor or a scientist. So we end up having to talk to the bald man once again. The bald man blinded us, but we had to get his permission to go and cure the disease. And then we get to meet the Volus, our boy. Yes, I'm the only survivor from the hot lab, you know. Ragnai? That's preposterous. The Krogan wiped them out a thousand years ago. They found it in a... This trophy, all you have to do is just pretty much get all the codex you can so go up to everybody and investigate them eventually you will get this achievement that way we end up making a cure or synthesizing a cure and man we suck at doing a little mini game for it your mission ends here shepherd what the hell she's surrounded by geth and pointing a gun at us shoot her Apparently, Matriarch Benezia has so many spies here, but we end up dealing with the Asari Trader. And don't worry, the Volus, the Volus, he lived. He's okay. The guard, on the other hand, that was protecting the door, he's not. But our Volus, more importantly, lived. Anyway, we tell the doctor that we got the cure, and we ultimately give it to him. We then head down to the hot labs to deal with the remaining Rachni that are in the facility. Their fathers, eggs are carried away from the colony to hatch a lot. Controls are nearby. All you do is insert the key. Then I will we activate the neutron bomb, which wipes out all the rack nine area, but we have to get the hell out of the hot labs because if we don't, then it will wipe us out. And there is a lot of rack nine that's trying to stop us from doing so. This part, I almost died so many times, but we ultimately go up the elevator and manage to survive. Headed back, we wanted to tell Baldi the good news, and well, Baldi is working for Matriarch Benezia, of course. Why isn't he? So we have to deal with Baldi, sadly. I loved Baldi, but we ended up having to deal with him and wiping out majority of the guards here just to get to Matriarch Benezia. We also get the Status Mastery Trophy along the way, which is used that ability 25 times, where we ultimately encounter Matriarch Benezia. We brought Liara with us, and they have a unique banter back and forth, because Liara is the daughter of Matriarch Benezia, if I didn't make that clear in the past. Anyway, Matriarch Benezia wants to attack us, and she wants to have the Rachni Queen, who is making all the Rachni use them in some way, shape, or form, as maybe soldiers or whatnot. Anyway, we have to wipe out a bunch of Geth and a bunch of Asari Commandos, where ultimately we learn that Matriarch Benezia is indoctrinated. Squealing and reverberating. Mother... Good night, little wing. I will see you again with the dawn. Seeing the Vacni Queen, he's puzzled on what to do, Commander Shepard is. He actually interacts with the Vacni Queen directly through an Asari Commando, and he ultimately decides that he's not going to wipe out the Vacni Queen and lets her live, because he doesn't want to cause another genocide on the species. We head back to the Normandy to report our findings to the Council and to our crew members, and ultimately the Council is very annoyed that we did it. No matter what we do, the Council is annoyed with what we do, they pretty much bitch us up, and Ah, well, you know, we disconnect from them. And for some reason, Stalker Ashley believed that I was flirting with her. This isn't the time to talk about this. Commander Shepard having a deeper connection with Liara chooses a her over Ashley, and mainly because we didn't have any connection to Ashley. She just is weird and stalks Shepard for no reason at all. What a weirdo. Anyway, the council gets in contact with us, and they tell us a little bit of information. Apparently, there's a squad on Vermeer that we need to go and check out. But before we do that, we actually head to another place, a couple other side missions here and there. This is the first and only time we do not disconnect with the council, mainly because the game did not give us the option to, and for once they're not pitching 
bitching at us. Commander Shepard decides now is the time to help out Garrus to help with crew morale and also because he kind of likes Garrus. To give a little bit more background to Garrus' side mission, there's this doctor pretty much who was a career criminal selling organs and doing all the most heinous stuff you could think of. Anyway, we go to the ship where he's at right now and he is doing live test subjects. He has them. Thank you. Thank you for saving me from those things. Commander, that's him. We can't let him get away. Not again. If he dies, we'll never know what he's been up to or how he did it. We'll take him in, interrogate him, and he'll serve his time. Thank you so very much. Caden ultimately decides that he doesn't want to deal with putting him in jail, so he puts him down real quick. Apparently, he had a gun out, that guy did, but oh well. Anyway, we tell Garrus why, what the point of all that was, and we ultimately move on to our next mission. Admiral Hackett lets us know that, hey, we, they lost a module someplace in this planet, so we ultimately head to this planet. This data module has a bunch of Geth intel that we need, and, well, the Geth are kind of looking for it. This quest is called Lost Module, and the synopsis for it is this. Alliance Command had asked you to recover a data module used to gather intel on the Geth movements in the beta cluster. It's likely the Geth are also after the data module. We encountered this weird Prophean artifact during this planet, and remember the trinket Shire gave us? Well, this trinket was useful, and we get a bunch of visions that pop up. The ball explodes into a brilliant flash of white light, momentarily blinding and disorienting you. Slowly, your senses return as you wake from a deep sleep. You are alone in the forest, though you are not far from the caves you share with the others of your tribe. There is a pain and a small lump in the back of your skull, as if a chip of flint has been forced underneath the surface of your skin. Leaning on your bone-tipped spear for support, you rise to your feet. Sound draws your attention upwards, whereas a strange creature hovers high above you. It is unlike the birds you have hunted by the lake's edge. It has no head and no wings. Raising a hairy fist, you shake your spear at it in the anger, and the creature rises up quickly until it disappears from view. With a satisfied grunt, you make your way back to your cave and the rest of the tribe. Days will pass, then nights, until the winter happens. Then you hear the creature, it makes a deafening noise once again, and it swoops down and grabs you! We awoke a moment later, the Prothean artifact still intact. We wonder, what was the Protheans doing? Were they really studying our ancestors? Our squad mates ask if we're okay? This is a mystery we'll never solve. Back to reality, the commander said, we ended up finding the down probe where apparently the monkeys actually ended up, well the monkeys of this planet ended up taking them, so now we have to go look for them. It's pretty much you go into this mining facility, we find the data module that we need, and a bunch of geth ambush us. You can kill the monkeys for renegade points if you really want to, but why would you do such a thing? We narrowly defeat the Geth Ambush because they really did get a good jump on us, and we head to the Paragon unique side quest for having Max Paragon. It's called Besieged Base. Pretty much biotic fanatics have taken over a medical station and drugged innocent researchers to serve as human shields. You must eliminate the biotics while minimizing innocent casualties. Commander Shepard landing on the planet, he knows what he has to do. He has to make sure none of the researchers die at all. Pretty much this goes poorly when first try first comes around. The researcher immediately dies and there's a counter for it right here. We had to restart because we ended up dying. So anyway, we use the singularity to pretty much pull the researcher out of the way. And we draw all the biotics to us in the beginning so that way they wouldn't wipe out any of them. And we completely wiped them out. Also, the researcher, funny enough, he posed and I ended up making a song out of it. They're in my head. All of them. Nine. You clear the facility. All the civilians are safe, though still chanting to themselves and screaming at the garbage cans. Evolution of humanity, huh? These biotics don't seem that different from the other scum you deal with. I didn't think it could be done, Commander. You managed to secure the base and neutralize the biotics without a single civilian casualty. We head to the unique planet that you can go to when you have the Max Renegade, and then on top of this, we encounter a Thresher Maul at the borders of the world, and we end up killing the Thresher Maul because we hate Thresher Mauls. This is our fourth Thresher Maul in count. This mission is called a negotiation, and is unique to the Renegade option for having a Max. Pretty much, the Alliance made a treaty with this guy named Darius over this rich asteroid, and pretty much our job is to negotiate. I hope the Alliance would take this meeting seriously. Instead, they insult me by sending a military grunt to show me how tough they are. Your file says you couldn't even save the rest of your unit on a coups. You got everyone killed. I'm not here to put up with your crap, Darius. Shall we talk, or should I just shoot you now? Commander Shepard was fuming. He did not like this guy at all. Commander Shepard decided he's going to deal with this guy how he deals with other scumbags like him. The prime reason why you do not bring up a coups to Commander Shepard. Someone once said that diplomacy comes from the barrel of a gun. 
You make quick work of Lord Darius, or whatever the hell his name is, and his disciples that he has following him. The Alliance actually wanted this outcome to happen, funny enough. Commander Shepard said to himself, any day that ends with one less crackpot self proclaimed lord on the frontier is a good day. You put Darius in power, but he was getting greedy. You wanted me to kill him. Remember what happened with the whole Cerberus thing and Akus? Yeah, well, uh, they end up killing that Admiral that we had to deal with. So now, we have to go find out what happened to the Admiral exactly and deal with Cerberus once and for all. We head to the coordinates that the Admiral gave to us and we head to one of the research bases that is being run by Cerberus. Well, it turns out, remember the Rachni we saw in Novaria? Well, somehow they got a little bit of hatchlings of them and they are experimenting on them for unknown reasons. I have no idea why they're doing it. We wipe out this research base and then we head to another one where they're experimenting on these weird creatures called Thorians. We have no idea what they are and we have not seen them yet. After wiping out this research base, we head to another research base where we ultimately find the fate of the Admiral. Dead in a cell with a Rachni soldier, he ended up dying to this Rachni soldier, I guess for a weird fucked up experiment. Shepard, mad at everything that Cerberus has done to him and all the carnage they're ongoing, we head to their main base that we know of, and we de ultimately destroy the living hell out of it, and get all the data we can before they shut down the complete servers, then we get contacted by the Shadow Broker for some reason. Transmission coming in, Commander. I think you're gonna want to hear this one. I'm merely an agent for the Shadow Broker. Apparently, Admiral got in touch with the Shadow Broker and got the intel he needed to find the research bases for the Cerberus organization. They want the data that Cerberus has on them, and we ultimately declined it. The next main quest we go to is Pharos, and Pharos is a colony that is getting hit with the Geth. We have no idea why the Geth are here, and we have to uncover the reason why, and help the colony in the process. That's our little side mission. We end up pushing a lot of the Geth out of the colony, and prevent an entire attack, and the colonists from being wiped out by the initial Geth attack. Now, these Geth, well, these Geth, I don't know why, they really want the, the colonists base for some reason. I have no idea why. So we agree that the colonists need help with food, water electricity, everything like that. We also have max credits at this point. But anyway, we decided to help the colonists get their water back, get their food, stop a Geth transmission from the Geth pushing up so hard, and we do literally all that. That's all the side missions that we relatively get in Pharos, and we end up killing an Alpha Varen in the process. We end up getting two trophies here, which is Neuroshock Specialist, the colonists with everything they need and we get another trophy called completionist pretty much we have done so many side missions to the point where the game believes that we completed majority of the game because apparently we have even though we haven't even beat most of the main story missions yet commander shepherd and the crew end up having to push back to geth and get rid of this geth drop ship we end up finding a bunch of exogeny researchers they are bickering at each other and one is looking for their daughter where it conveniently is in the place that we need to go we end up finding the daughter where she shoots at us and completely misses we end up getting another power specific perk and it's called ai hacking specialist Oh, we also equipped our shotgun with this mod called High Explosive Rounds, which increases the force by a lot, so we get to knock back a lot of the enemies. This eventually gets bugged. Also, a researcher named Gavin wanted us to find some data for him, so we end up getting his data back. And we use this little puzzle game for the shutters to actually get rid of the Geth Dreadnought, which has its little hooks inside the building. And the Geth Dreadnought completely falls, or the Geth Dropship, one of the two. Liz really wants to come with us, and surprisingly, she's not shooting at us right now. She tells us Exogeny has been experimenting on this weird creature called the Thorian. We end up heading back to the group of researchers that are surviving, and John, one of the main guys are there, really wants to wipe out the entire colonists and wants no trace left behind of what they did. The family reunion quickly gets interrupted when we have to intimidate John or John or whatever the guy's name is to not kill anybody at all. And we let him know that we will put him down if he tries anything. So you keep saying, but nobody's gonna miss a few colonists. You're a bean counter, Zhang. I'm a specter. Tell me, how good are those odds? <laughs> specter, it's a load of crap. There aren't any human specters. Right? We give the data back to Gavin, and Liz and her mother tell us about, hey look, there's a way you don't have to kill the colonists to get to the Thorian, you just use this anti-nerve agent. Commander Shepard actually wants to do the right thing, and actually will use this agent. We tell our squad mates to just be careful of the colonists, we do not want to hit any of them at all with any of our bullets or kill them, and anyway, we use this agent, which it makes this weird green, like, cum effect, and we end up having all 16 colonists alive. It would have been 17, but this leader of the colony ends up uh, doing something that I'm not even going to say, I'm just going to let the video play out.
we encountered this crazy plant-based creature where it's actually a uh, parasite where it uses a bunch of people to do its bidding and protect the colony pretty much or protect it anyway it popped out this weird green asari commando and remember the high explosive rounds well yeah now we're just sending enemies flying with it no idea why i started doing that but it's the best bug of all time we end up ultimately defeating the thorian and killing it once and for all that way it can't prey on the colonists anymore and this blue asari commando pops out which apparently she was matriarch benezia's right hand woman she gives us this cipher that allows us to actually understand the prothean messages and everything like that and then she gives us this ultimate choice where she wants to help the colony we have a choice either to kill her or let her live Commander Shepard lets her live because the colonists really need the help. Then we get a trophy for completing Pharos. Jong says we'll have all the money we need to keep this place running. It's because of you, Shepard. I can't. Metal heroism, like I said before, is completing Pharos. We also talked to Rex where we had to have this little bit into it. Shepard. Rex. Our next main story mission is going to Vermeer. There was a special task group that contacted the council to let them know that they needed help. Well, they didn't really know the message all the way through. Sam's been working on a bunch of stuff here. One of them is being curing the genophage, kind of. He's just going to make all the Krogan their puppets. And Vex doesn't like that. We are not a mistake. Vex really does believe that this is going to help his people in the long run. You can talk him down and get a trophy for doing it, which is called Charismatic, and this is how that plays out doesn't care about these Krogan. They're tools, puppets. He'll destroy them as soon as they're no longer useful to him. Is that what you want for your people? Sadly, this outcome is not something that our Commander Shepard does. This is what ultimately happens to Rex. I can't believe he'd turn on us. Commander Shepard had to put him down. He's not really that good at talking to people. And if intimidation don't work, well, that's the only way he knows how to do it. Anyway, we talk to Captain Kirihi where he wants one of our soldiers. We point Caden to him and then he gives this really long speech about holding the line or something like that. I'm not going to subject you guys to that. Screw that. On our way to assault Saren's base, we actually can assist Kirihi's team. Kirihi actually needs our help because if you don't help him at all, he ends up dying. So what you can do is you get rid of this Geth communicator, you also can destroy this Geth satellite, and then you also can even destroy these Geth drones that go to refuel. Another thing you can do, you get a choice when you actually arrive to the base, is you can actually divert all the people that are inside to them, or you can just say they had enough trouble. I honestly always go with they had enough trouble because you can just easily wipe them out, and it's free XP for you. Also, all the enemies go flying here, which is absolutely hilarious. I love this shotgun. And we also encounter some test subjects uh, for indoctrination he's studying. Can't take that chance. No chance. I need to do what it says. I have to. Let me out. Let me out! Let me out! Let me out! We encountered a researcher, an Asari researcher, who had no idea what was going on and wants to leave. Uh, we don't really believe her, but we let her go anyway because there's no way she's going to outrun a nuke. I'm going to blow this place to hell and gone. If you want to make it out alive, you better start running. What? You can't. But I'll never. Ah! We then find another beacon that gives us even more visions. The visions pretty much tell us that 50,000 years ago, this species called Reapers end up wiping out all of life in the galaxy as we know it, and then end up disappearing. Remember that ship we talked about, that was Sarens? Well, it turns out that is a Reaper. Anyway, we head back to go nuke the living hell out of this place. Ashley ends up defending the nuke against the Geth, and then Caden also needs help as well, making us make a decision. Here, and is bleeding Geth all over the bomb site. Can you hold them off? There's too many! The one Ashley made us choose? Well, we're choosing against her again, we're choosing Caden. Radio Joker and tell him to meet us on the AA Tower. Yes, Commander. I-, I... Fight hard, Chief. Die proud. Aye, aye, Commander. We end up going to save Caden, and Captain Kirheed did manage to survive, and we encountered Saren. And Saren clearly is under Reaper influence. My only hope. Don't you see? You're just a tool. Sovereign's using you. In the end, you'll be tossed aside with all the rest. 
We then finish the fight with Saren where he ends up fleeing like a coward he is and Shepard has a lot of time to reflect on the fact that he lost two squad members during the attack on Vermeer, and this is going to weigh heavily on him for the upcoming days. Vermeer ultimately ends up getting bombed and we destroy Saren's research base. Then we also get the trophy for completing Vermeer. I can't believe- the council wants to talk to us once again, and while you know how everything goes with the council, we really have little patience for them. Ah, oh, looks like we lost the signal, Joker. Understood, Commander. We end up heading back to the Citadel, where we tell the council that Saren is going to attack the Citadel, but we need to find the conduit. This is what we need to find. The council is dumb. If Saren is foolish enough to attack the Citadel, as you believe, we will be ready for him. Commander Shepard frustrated because the Normandy got locked down, him and Liara share a moment together. Sorry to interrupt, Commander. Got a message from Captain Anderson. We talk to Captain Anderson and he's like, look, I'll get the Normandy unlocked and I'm going to do it two ways. Either go after the Ambassador or go to the uh, Citadel control station and go there. Well, we tell him to break into Udina's office and go after the Ambassador and this is what he ultimately does. Anderson, what are you doing here? I didn't send it. Didn't send it. Didn't send it. We end up heading to Isla's, but before we head to Isla's, we do the DLC, which is called Bring Down the Sky. Bring Down the Sky, pretty much an asteroid is going to Terra Nova, and a bunch of Batarians end up taking over this and is sending the asteroid straight to Terra Nova to wipe out the human colony because the Batarians don't like humans. We end up stopping the asteroid from hitting Terra Nova, and well, the guy Balak, yeah, he, he really doesn't like that we did that, and he had set bombs and has hostages. And so we either had to let him go or we had to save the hostages. Commander Shepard, being who he is, he ends up saving the hostages. We end up earning a trophy for completing Bring Down the Sky, the DLC to this game, and Commander Shepard says something that takes me aback a bit. So what happens now? The bad guys get away? Have you ever hunted Simon? Actually stalked an animal in the wilderness? Can't say as I have. Hunting an animal requires patience and discipline. I'll wait for this Batarian animal to pop his head up again, and then I'll come down on him like the wrath of God. We end up heading to Isla's, but before we arrive, we end up sharing a very intimate moment with Liara. Alright, all these events happen very quickly. Pretty much we end up landing to Isla's, push our way through it, we encounter a BI that tells us everything about what happened to the Protheans here, which they went into cryogenetic stasis, and they ultimately go use the conduit that they have to go back to the citadel because the conduit is just this little mass relay to go to the citadel. While all this is happening, the Reaper, Sovereign, and the Geth army is attacking the citadel and of course they were not ready for it. The council once again being complete and other morons. Anyway, we get a trophy for completing Ilos and we end up pushing our way through the citadel prevent Sovereign from attacking, well actually he's already attacking, but prevent Sovereign from actually gaining control of the citadel, which we ultimately fail because Sovereign wants to send out the signal to tell the other reapers hey wake up from your hibernation and go into the cycle mode where you harvest all the rest of humanity anyway we push our way into the citadel and we ultimately encountered Saren. you could have resisted you could have fought instead you surrendered Saren faced with the harsh reality what he's done he ultimately makes this decision it's not over yet you can still redeem yourself goodbye shepherd thank you now Shepard has a hard decision to make. He can either let the council die or save the council. If we let the council die, we end up having more military power for the Alliance in order to actually prevent the Reaper invasion or try to stop it when they do go for the harvest. Or we can save the council. We end up doing the first one option because one, the council has been a pain in Shepard's side the entire time, and two, on top of that, we need that military power. He does not make that decision lightly. We end up getting the Platinum Trophy, and then on top of that, we elect Captain Anderson as the new counselor. <laughs> 